In this video, we are going to talk about pruning, specifically about cost complexity pruning. In a previous video, we mentioned that there are two options to prevent overfitting of the data. One is to use constraints during the building of the tree. The second is after the tree is developed to prune it, that is make it smaller. One type of pruning is called cost complexity pruning, abbreviated as CCP. Let's establish some notation. If we develop a tree to its fullest, we will call this T max. Let R of little t define the risk of the node, that is the proportion of observation in a node times the metric or score function of that node. For example, the Gini value or the MSE of the node. And R of big T define the risk of the entire tree, that is the sum of the risk of each leaf node. This is a measure of the goodness of fit of the tree. The smaller it is, the better. Let capital T of little t define the subtree whose root node starts at node t. The cardinality of t tilde is the number of leaf nodes in the tree, and of t little t, the number of leaf nodes in a subtree. The objective in cost complexity pruning is not just to minimize the overall risk of the tree. We add a penalty to the objective, alpha times the number of leaf nodes in the tree. And so we look for the tree that minimizes this penalized objective. Notice that alpha is the cost and the number of leaves is the complexity, hence the name cost complexity. Alpha is a hyperparameter. If we set it to zero, we are back to the full tree because the algorithm we have tries to minimize the risk of the entire tree. If we set alpha to be very high, then no splits will be justified and we will be left with only a stump, meaning a tree with no splits. One nice property shown in the cart monograph is that the trees are nested, that is, as we increase alpha, we will get a subtree of the original full tree. And as we increase it more, we will get a subtree of that tree until we reach the stump. This is denoted by this formula over here and allows for efficient pruning algorithm. Here's how it looks like graphically. When alpha is very big, we only get a stump. As we decrease it, we get a bigger and bigger tree until we reach the full tree. Notice how each tree is a subtree of the tree to its right. The penalized objective gives rise to a simple decision rule. We will prune a node if the penalty made by its subtree is bigger than the reward we get from having the subtree. Reorganizing the equation, we get the following pruning rule. If we keep the subtree, we will have this amount of leaf nodes. But if we make the split node a leaf node, we will only have one leaf node in this branch. So this is how many extra leaf nodes we get. And we multiply this by their cost. R of little t is the amount of risk we will have if we don't keep the subtree. And R of the subtree is how much the risk is reduced to with the subtree. Subtracting them gives how much we reduce the risk and how much we gained. If the penalty is bigger than the reward, it doesn't make sense to keep the subtree and we should prune at this node. Note that if the tree was built without constraint, the risk of the subtree will most likely be zero, unless we have identical features with different responses or labels. But we can also mix constraints and pruning, and then the risk of the subtree won't be zero. So this pruning rule implies the following algorithm. Compute the right-hand side, which we will call the effective cost, for each split node. And then for whatever alpha you wish, prune the node, as in make a split node a leaf node, if its effective cost is lower than alpha. If we wish to increase alpha, we can do this again for the new tree we have, and we don't have to start from the full tree. Alpha is a hyperparameter and is chosen by validation. Here we can see a graph generated by the sklearn implementation, where for each value of alpha, we get different training and test set accuracy. We see that the best test set accuracy is achieved for this alpha, and so we should choose this one. Let's go through a short example. Remember the pruning rule, and let's apply this to the split node over here. The risk of the node is equal to this, since there are 80 samples overall and eight in this specific node. The risk of the subtree is zero, since all the leaf nodes are pure and have zero gene. The number of leaf nodes in this subtree is three. And so if we calculate the effective cost, we get this number. So if alpha will be 0.01, .01, meaning less than the effective cost, we will keep the subtree. But if it's bigger, say 0.011, .01, we will prune at this node. Note that the effective cost for the split node is actually higher, but it doesn't matter as its parent node will be pruned earlier. So it's something to keep in mind. Children's split nodes can have higher effective costs than their parents. Okay, let's move to implement this in Python. Beam us up, Scotty. A quick disclaimer, this code is not production level. It's just for teaching purposes, and there could be ways to improve it. 
In fact, if you find ways to do so, feel free to conduct the code review in the comments section below. We start by loading the necessary libraries. I also load the tree to .helper function from the last video to help us visualize the tree. We use the same classification tree with the Gini impurity score. I moved all the functions from the last code under one class to make it a bit more organized. We instantiate the tree object with a data set and a score function. I augmented the node class to hold more information. In split nodes, we will now also keep track of R node, the risk of a specific node, the R subtree, the risk of the subtree, the T leaves, the number of leaves in the subtree, and the effective cost. Since each split node might become a leaf node after pruning, we will store the value for all nodes and create an isLeaf flag to signal if a node is leaf node or not. The building of the tree involves two parts. We will first build the tree recursively, and after that, we will traverse the tree and compute the necessary information for the pruning. The build tree recursive is the same as before, except for calculating the value of each node, regardless if it's a leaf or a split node, and flagging the leaf nodes with an isLeaf equal true. We also calculate the risk of the node and add it to the split nodes. The find best split method is almost identical. I only made one small change, and that is to iterate over the midpoints between thresholds instead of the actual thresholds, such that we save one iteration. The predict signal is almost the same, only instead of checking if the value is not none, we check if the node is a leaf node. The predict method does the same as before, only written a bit more elegantly. The compute method is a recursive method that accumulates the R node and the number of leaf nodes it encounters along the way. Leaf nodes return one for the number of leaf nodes and their R node, and split nodes accumulate these values from their children. We wipe the slate clean every time we call this function to be able to call this function more than once. Once we have this information, we can calculate the effective cost. The pruning method calls the doPruning method, which is also a recursive method. Then it calls compute again to update the information in case a subsequent pruning is necessary. The recursive method traverses the tree, and if a split node effective cost is lower than alpha, we prune it by flagging it as a leaf node and clearing the left and right pointers. Otherwise, we continue to traverse the tree. We will use the exact same data and setup as the last video, a 2D classification problem. We'll split the data into train and test, build the tree on the train set, and create a visualization of it. Note that the full-grown tree has 13 leaf nodes and achieves a 70% accuracy on the test set, just like before. Now let's prune with an alpha of 0.01. We see that this pruned tree has 11 leaf nodes, and we see that we improved the test accuracy to 75%. If we raise the alpha to 0.011, the pruned tree will have 9 leaf nodes. Note that we didn't rebuild the tree, but started with the prune tree from before, because, as mentioned before, the prune trees are nested. For alpha of 0.013, we will have seven nodes. And if we raise the alpha high enough, in this case to above 0.3, we will get only a stump. Here are the visualizations of the different trees. Notice that when we increase from 0.01 to 0.011, this node, which corresponds to the example shown in the slide, is pruned. This is all for this video. I hope you found it useful. See you in the next one.